I was just reading a rather disturbing and eye-opening article on Al Jazeera about Israel and its arms trading written by a Jonathan Cook. Despite an arms embargo imposed by Europe and the United States, Israel has been sending arms to Myanmar, which as you may or may not know, the regime there has been engaged in targeted attacks and killings of the Rohingya ethnic minority. People have been fleeing over the border into Bangladesh. Textbook ethnic cleansing, the UN has called it. Apparently, Israeli arms dealers have also been fueling the civil war in South Sudan, which has been going on for years now. It's not difficult to understand why arms trading would be a significant part of the Israeli economy. Covert dealings are a part of the trade, but legally, Israeli companies, arms dealers, do business in scores of countries. It's a trade which pulls in several billion dollars a year. Israel is thought to be in the top 10 arms exporting nations in the world, which, considering its size, is no small achievement. An investigative journalist called John Brown, which is a pseudonym, I think, said, quote, If countries want the best arms, then they probably go to the US and Europe. But when no one else will sell to you, then you turn to Israel. The benefits for Israel are not just measured in money. Often even more important are the diplomatic and strategic alliances Israel can gain from this arms trade, unquote. Human rights groups have been trying to expose or shine a light, if you like, on the dealings of arms exporters. In Israel, the Supreme Court was petitioned to stop weapon sales to Myanmar. From what I can gather, it looks, it looks suspect to me. It's dealt with in a hush-hush fashion, closed-door sessions, preventing the public from hearing the court's decision. Yeah. This court has rejected petitions in the past regarding Israel's part in arming groups in other parts of the world. Think Africa, South America, Eastern Europe. It's alleged that Israel was involved in ar arming the Argentine military tyranny during the 1970s, where thousands of activists disappeared. It's alleged Israel was involved in the Rwanda genocide of the 1990s, arming the Hutu. There are accusations of many clandestine activities, fueling wars and ethnic cleansing around the world. Ite Mack is a human rights lawyer who has submitted many petitions to the Israeli courts. Clearly, he's looking to bring this issue to the world's attention. He said, quote, Many Western states sell arms. But what's unique about Israel is that wherever war crimes and crimes against humanity are being committed, you find Israel is present. Companies selling the weapons and the officials who quietly approve their trade must be held accountable. Otherwise, why would this ever stop? Unquote. Yeah, okay, but if the Supreme Court keeps throwing out your petitions and much of the public remains indifferent to this shit... How will the dealers and government stuffed suits ever be held to account? I would say any effective campaign against arms dealing companies and governments has to be 
international in scope, has to be grassroots, has to be well organised. But in doing this, you're going up against very powerful interest groups who will most likely strike back very hard against you. So be ready for that.